Good afternoon, Bishop Carcano and members of the annual conference. If there is one thing that we learned in 2020, it is how good it is to be together in one place. And so I am glad to be with you this afternoon. My name is Susan Smith, and as the chair of the Call to Wholeness design team, I truly appreciate the time offered to let us share about our Call to Wholeness program. The 2016 Book of Discipline, paragraph 349, says this, every clergy person shall also engage in a six-month process of personal and professional assessment and development every eight years. With this in mind, our team would like to invite you to join us on a journey of wellness and care for our clergy throughout their ministries. The good news is that the adventure has begun. We started this program well before the pandemic by crafting our program of renewal and review, which we named Called to Wholeness, knowing that what we wanted most for our clergy was an acknowledgement of their call to ministry, continued discernment of their call throughout their career, and an emphasis on the wholeness of their ministry in balance with all the other pieces of their lives. At the center of Call to Wholeness is a new assessment tool from the Global Board of Higher Education and Ministry called the EM360, which provides a 360 evaluation of the pastor in the context of their ministry setting and offers an opportunity to create ministry goals for the next five years in partnership with their congregation highlighting the gifts and graces of the clergy person in a way that would maximize their effectiveness in their current setting. In order to offer each clergy person time for rest and reflection, a reconnection to their call, and an opportunity to establish new supportive relationships with other conference clergy, we have packed the EM360 into the container we call Call to Wholeness. We offer this to each clergy person as a gift on the five-year anniversaries of their ordination. This package includes reflection retreats and wellness resources alongside the assessment process. So we're all packed up with a great sense of anticipation. We sent our first trailblazers out on this road in 2019, and the pilot class completed their adventure just before the pandemic. One of those travelers, George Ed Bennett, is here to share his experience on this journey and how he and his congregation have continued to build on their plans even as the pandemic changed the course they had set using the EM360 process. Thank you, Bishop, and annual conference for uh, just being willing to hear the call to wholeness process as it played out in the life of the church Lodi First, where I serve, and in my life as well. You know, I'm a good Methodist, which to me means that a plan, a plan that's well crafted and well thought out, is the pathway to perfection. <laughs> we had such a great plan. The SPRC and the Conference Board of Ordained Ministry and me, well, we all completed this needs assessment, they called it the EM360, and it, it helped us to understand um, what were the gifts that the church were, was presenting, and what were my gifts, and, and what were the needs that, that we were going to embark upon trying to solve. Um, we, we made meaningful personal connections, and we found time for spiritual renewal. The church Found out, found out the plan would be that we'd be developing a discipleship education program and engaging in the Growing Young Initiative and that we would openly demonstrate how trust in God really informed our lives and that I would be attending the Homiletics Festival. We were very excited about the outcomes that we anticipated and it was 2019. So the global pandemic came to me just like it did to you and widespread stay-at-home orders were there, and, and the suspension of in-person gatherings. It was like getting 
ready to go on a journey to, across to the west of the United States and you were in a covered wagon and you were buying a lot of dry goods by the keg and putting them in 100 pound storage bins and, and you'd get all the way to the county line before the wheels fell off the wagon, all four of them. You know, what really happened was quite an adventure. I was and still truly am excited to be appointed at Lodi First United Methodist Church for a time just like this one. And the call to wholeness program made me feel as though the church and I were on the verge of a spiritual growth spurt, but we had no idea what was in store for us. As 2019 happened, we recognized that everything was going to be changed. Instead of the plan that we had, well... But weren't we all getting together right now to, um, to start to plan our strategic plan forward in 2019? Weren't we preparing for the 2020 um, global conference of the church? And none of that happened. We found ourselves instead working together in ministry in the face of a global pandemic. I'm sure that my story is not that different from most of the stories of churches out there. But that's because wholeness doesn't come from the board of ordained ministry. It comes from God. And, and what the board of ordained ministry offered was a tool that helped us along the way. We were committed to creating meaningful connections, um, both through the church and through the community. And we established a new ministry direction um, after the pandemic hit. It was called Hope is Found Here. And we decided that that's what the church would be in the midst of a pandemic, a place where others would find hope, a place where we ourselves would be anchored in hope. We purchased a Call em All subscription and started a two-minute robocall that would go out on Wednesdays, and we called it A Word for Wednesday. It reached 330 phones every week, and it's still going on today because it was one of the things that the church loved most. There were people shut in even before 2019. And they hadn't been hearing from the church as much as they'd love to. With great support from the staff, we retooled the constant contact to be a source of daily devotion and laughter. And our communications, instead of being opened once a week, occasionally by a household, were being opened more than 900 times per week. Our fitness instructor recorded exercise classes that were made available to people in our community and in our church for free. And that way, people that were shut in and by stay-at-home orders were given free access and, and allowed to, to exercise their bodies and feel fully alive. We created our first YouTube channel. That may be true for some of the other churches, too. <laughs> we're getting more than 150 views during the peak of the pandemic every single week. And when the opportunity to join J.B. Bray Finley and the Pentecost circuit led by Reverend Matoy Yamada 4 arrived, well, we were excited to contribute to and create special videos for children's worship. And as you may have already heard, there's been more than 10,000 views for those children's worships. We formed an ad hoc panel for gathering, both in person and online. This was a group of people from the church that didn't agree with each other. And we met via Zoom and discussed what it was going to be like to be gathering, whether it was going to be online or in person. And we started to create protocols for safety. And we started to be together on our thinking and, and come to a consensus and really have some idea of how we would be in ministry together, whether we agreed with whatever policies were in public or not. Then we requested a grant from the, the Central Valley District Union and received $10,000 to establish long-term editing um, and editing staff. You see, we had a volunteer that was editing videos for us. And, and this poor man ended up working 20 to 25 hours a week every single um, Sunday just to make the videos happen. He begged us to get editing um, help. And, and thank you. Uh, the, he's also on the district committee for, <laughs> for the district union. Now, we're beginning to address the, the dismantling of racism because of courageous conversations, both at local, local community members, like with Bertram Chatham, and then using the videos that we're getting from Michelle Pope, our lay leader for the conference. You know, in the end, it didn't matter where the wagon stopped. The church and I, as the pastor, 
we're bonded together. Bonded together in a, in a wholeness sense that we were getting from God. A sense that we would do this together, that we would be able to go through whatever struggle faced us today because we knew each other better, we knew each other's gifts, we cared about being in ministry together, and we wanted to make hope reachable for everyone in our community. This has been a great blessing. And I hope that those of you who have a story just like this recognize that that wholeness that you're experiencing came from God too. And that if you are one in a church that needs to be bonded more closely together, listen to what they're offering here at the Call to Wholeness program. May God bless you on the journey. Amen. Thank you, George, for so wonderfully describing the ministry journey you have been on in Lodi. I know that all of us resonate with the need to adjust and readjust our plans. Seems like that's become the new normal. And I'm glad that George and the church in Lodi were able to build on the relationships they had deepened and the conversations they had begun as part of the EM360 and Call to Wholeness prior to the pandemic. It's now time for all of us to hop on board. As we prepare to restart our Call to Wholeness plans in the conference, we have checked and rechecked our wagons for the shared journey to a new landscape in ministry. Our plan is still sound. As we slowly come out of the pandemic over the next few years, Call to Wholeness is prepared to welcome each and every clergy person to their own time of personal renewal and ministry assessment. While participation in Call to Wholeness is mandatory, our prayer and hope is that clergy will receive this time as a gift that enables each of us to live fully into God's claim and call on our lives. Our goals are clear. More than ever before, we hear the need from our clergy colleagues for time away, for refocusing, for renewing our call and passion for ministry with support and balance. With the collaborative efforts of the cabinet and the Board of Ordained Ministry and the orders, we've created an eight-month eight month program of retreats and workshops that will guide clergy through the assessment period with support and care for their whole ministry and also be a gift from the conference celebrating their, each of their five-year ordination anniversaries. And we have the tools and the resources to offer each clergy person and congregation. While our clergy will be invited to retreats and workshops, our congregations too will be involved in offering full feedback and setting ministry goals in the new format of the EM360. And our conference teams will work to support adaptation to this new tool and the doors that we hope it will open for the ministry in your local churches. Just as it did for Pastor George and the Lodi Church, we hope this tool will build stronger working relationships between clergy and their leadership teams and give congregations a new way to think about their ministry within their current leadership strengths. So we are packed and ready to go. The 2022 class has been invited and is preparing their wagons for an adventure of deeper relationships and spiritual growth, partnering with their congregations to fully honor the shared road ahead. Now the journey is before us. Will you come along? As a conference, we're creating a culture of ongoing discernment and faithful response to God's call to lead and serve in ministry in the ever-changing landscape of our churches and communities. As we hear in Isaiah 43, all that you have done before, it is nothing compared to what I'm going to do next. For I am going to do a brand new thing. See, I have already begun. Don't you see it? I will make a road through the wilderness of the world for my people to go home and create rivers for them in the desert. May we all find the nourishment and strength God gives for our journey. Call to Wholeness is made possible by congregational tithes to the ministry budget of the annual conference and offerings to the Ministerial Education Fund. Thank you, thank you, thank you all for being part of our work and part of the journey. We are excited to welcome the 2022 class to start their adventure in March, knowing that we all need a call to wholeness now more than ever before. Thank you.
Susan, if you would hold on for one minute. Could we have the class of 22 for the call to wholeness, please stand? <laughs> class of 22. If you've received an invitation for 2022. So these are our friends who are up next to be supported by this global church initiative. Not only, not only do I want us to thank them, but I want us to pray for them. They represent all of our clergy. So could I ask you to stand one more time and allow <laughs> us to stretch our hands towards you. I'm going to invite every one of us to be in prayer. It'll be a prayer that we will lift up uh, together. And so I want us to pray aloud in the Korean style. Pray for these are friends in whatever language your heart leads you to pray. Let's pray for them that on this journey they may be led to renewed wholeness. Let us pray. Precious Lord, thank you for these servants of yours. Bless them, Lord. Oh, Lord, we pray for them. We pray that you would anoint them and fill their spirits and their hearts. They need your grace. We pray, O oh God, that you would bless these, your servants, that as they enter into this journey, into the call to wholeness, that they may know how to surrender themselves to you. For indeed, as our brother George has said, it is you who makes us whole. So bless them. Bless the classes that have gone before them and the classes yet to come. Bless our clergy. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you very much.